So welcome to the Weave Your Magical World podcast. I'm super excited to announce our guest today, Arlene Hanks. And Arlene, you're in Australia and you're only a couple of hours um, behind New Zealand yes. time. So we're almost on the same time. Yes, I'm in the beautiful Gold Coast where the weather's always great and um, 22 degrees today. That's why I live oh. up here. <laughs> That's your winter. <laughs> yeah, it's my winter. I'm short sleeves and got bare feet and it's really nice. I have the heater on and a blanket over my knees. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Okay, so just going to introduce you briefly. Um, is um, Arlene is a life alignment practitioner. And so we're going to talk about what life alignment is and sort of discover a little bit about that, which is amazing. And she's also an accidental artist, <laughs> <laughs> which, which spawned from doodling, really, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, maybe one of your ways that you express your creativity while you're chatting to people or something so yeah what is the whole story in that what yeah that well we could that? start why don't we start with um the doodle story all right well the doodle story I think I've kind of always needed to fiddle so when I fiddle I have really really good memory recalls so if I'm just trying to sit there still and listen and learn I get sidetracked. But if I'm fiddling with my hands, so either doing crocheting or knitting or um, doodling, and it started just, you know, when, when I was at university or at school, there would be a few notes in my books, but mostly little ink drawings with whatever. And it does, it's not like I'm a stick figure artist, really. Um, I can't draw a face or I can't draw something that's supposed to be looking like anything, but I can doodle. And it, it kind of just started, my whole life has been like that. When I do something with my hands my focus becomes really really honed and even though I've only written about two or three keywords on the paper I have really good memory recalls so it's it's just a tool that I've used to to hone in my memories mm. um and then about mm, 2015 a really good friend of mine whose husband I, I do a lot of work for um his he runs a whole um, business and I'm, a, I'm his business consultant and they took the opportunity to come to Australia um, to do a bit of one-on-one -on -one work with me directly and also just to have an excuse for a good holiday when they were at my house she saw one of my doodles and she said oh wow what's that and I'm like a doodle and she's going no 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 that's more than a doodle I'm going it's a doodle <laughs> And she's going, no, 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 I will show you. She's uh, Norwegian, Viking. He turned on with Vikings. <laughs> I will show you. <laughs> and she's a graphic artist and um, an editor and whatnot else. So, you know, um, does graphic design and all that kind of thing. So she took a photograph of my doodle and then she applied it to something like a cup or a T-shirt. And she said, you'd buy that, wouldn't you? And I went, yeah. <laughs> And that's what happened. So I didn't actually get into doing anything with it at that stage. I just ignored it and just carried on just fiddling and drawing. And I was just drawing pen circle drawings and things like that. And then last year on the 13th of March, my husband and I had a blip. We broke up for a period of three months. But on the day that we broke up, my guide said to me very clearly, Go get an art journal, go get some pens and draw. Part of my training, you know, I'm, I'm a life alignment practitioner, but I'm also a psychophonetics practitioner, which is a form of psychotherapy based on Rudolf Steiner's work, anthroposophy. And part of that, we had done art therapy, you know, working through expression of, of art and expressing your emotions just through color and through sound and through gesture and through clay. So I have been very familiar with expressing my emotions in color um, or in drawing. Mm -hmm. And I brought my kids up doing the same sort of thing. You know, when they're frustrated, I'd get butcher paper and they'd sit there and they'd go, <laughs> and then I'd use that very pretty result to wrap up people's presents with. They just didn't know they were getting wrapped up with a temper tantrum. But you know. <laughs> I see that it looked really interesting. <laughs> you can create some very abstract, beautiful images when you're frustrated, you see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I got this message to do this. So this wasn't unusual. I thought, okay, I'm going to do art expression. And the first few drawings were very much about that pain, that anguish and all that else. And then after about a week, I just started finding it very soothing to draw. And I'm, I have a box of textures, you know, lots of different colors of texture pens. Okay? And 
before I go to bed at night, I'll put on a podcast or I'll put on a, uh, something and I just listen to something really inspirational and I draw at the same time. Mm. And the message goes in. Or if I'm on the phone to someone, I draw. Or um, if I'm, you know, because we do so much online now, um, if I'm attending a course, instead of just scribbling, I actually draw. And so, you know, this is what happens. So oh, I love them. Yeah. I encourage you, if you're listening to this on the podcast instead of on YouTube, just to jump on and check this out because they're, uh, they're just, I can feel so much from that as well. There's a lot. So I didn't realize at the time what I was doing. I just started drawing them. So sometimes mm-hmm. it's a full page of just color that comes out, you know? Yeah. And they're just different. Some of them are partially done. Some of them are very full on. But one stuff, I, I think you love to work with color. Oh, yeah. wow. And what I love about this is that like doodling is one of those things that we're told like as a, as a kid, if we're, you know, in school or something, you know, don't doodle because you're not concentrating. And yet it's that exact opposite. Now that is just my pure frustration and emotion. So that's not going for sale or anything like that. That's me just expressing emotion. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But And so some of them are just uh, in the moment. Like that was a bad day. <laughs> okay. But then this other stuff came up. Yeah. So yeah. yes, doodle. Awesome. Schools get it stuffed up. They tell kids to just sit still. Don't. Don't so sit still. What what's also coming up for me as we're speaking is that I've experienced your healing mm-hmm. and um your your meditations and just from speaking to you as well we sometimes just catch up on online as as friends which is lovely and I know how powerful you are and how what a um what a dramatic um it's probably not the word I want to use but like a really powerful impact that you have when you dramatic is probably the right word (laughs) yeah dramatic is probably (laughs) the right word (laughs) but um yeah that was the only one that's coming through so of course it was um that you have on people's lives and on people um, impacting their own lives. And then yet you're, you're sharing your doodles of days that were bad days. And this, this I think is so important because mm. often um, like I would have clients saying to me, like, oh, do you get bad days or do you feel down or do you have this kind of thing? I'm like, dude, why do you think I'm doing this work? Yeah. <laughs> and so can you maybe talk um, a little bit, we'll get into what life alignment is in a moment, but just talk a little bit about um I don't know, maybe your journey, how you came to be um, a healer. And um, I don't know if you associate with that word, but that's all I got at the moment. <laughs> yeah, how you kind of came to be there and it's and how it's very much given. about putting everything into it, ups and downs. Okay, that's a story in six halves. Um, <laughs> Give us the bits that feel relevant right now. So I was born in South Africa in the middle of the apartheid era uh, with a dubious color skin. <laughs> okay. I didn't realize at the time that I was ostracized because of my skin color, because technically speaking, I'm white, but quite frankly, I'm one of those families that has got bloodlines from everywhere and everything. I'm a full on bits, bits of this, bits of that, bits of the next thing. Okay. I'm a mongrel. <laughs> um, but Being born into a country that is apartheid meant that I would tan. So this is me untanned. But when I go into the sun, my skin changes color really quickly and I've got the dark eyes and this is henna hair. But, you know, when I was a kid, it was dark. Um, Right now we're into the full-blown red. But um, so I I would go to school and do things but be fairly ostracized. Um, So... The gift in that, though, was that I learned to become very independent. I learned to really make friends with myself, with my world. Um, And then at eight, I had a a very, very deep spiritual experience. I went, my parents didn't go to church, but they insisted that I go to Sunday school, which is very funny. But anyway, Um, so I had to go to Sunday school and I went down to Sunday school. It was a local one. It was a Baptist school. And there you have to give your heart to Jesus to be born again kind of thing. And I'm an eight-year-old, so I'm sitting there in this little dodgy little room with this woman and some other little eight-year-olds, and she's saying, now you must give your heart to Jesus, and we're going to do this prayer, and in this prayer, you're going to give your heart to Jesus and invite Jesus into your heart. Cool. I did it. 
But in the moment that I did it, I had this experience of this incredible violet blue light coming right down and coming into my being and into my heart. And I had a full on cosmic heart explosion experience and burst into tears of ecstatic joy, which made this woman totally panic. And she's like, why are you crying? And I'm going, because Jesus came into my heart and I'm happy. I'm thinking, well, this is what you said we had to do, right? You know? And she was very confused and kind of like ended the meeting and sent me off. <laughs> oh, weird one, that one. But I had this full-on experience with God, with Jesus as an eight-year-old. And then that actually had a very strong impact. It stayed with me. I did a lot of Bible studies, but while I was at church, I was very confused because, you know, my home life wasn't religious. And then I'd go to church and they would say all these things about loving each other and, and being connected, but they would ostracize me. They would say everybody was welcome, but I'd walk towards a group of girls and they would all turn their back on me. So I'm thinking, well, you're saying this, you're doing that, but, you know, so at a very young age, I started to look at the world and going, you're not saying and following through with what you're doing. It's not adding up. So I became an observer at a very young age and started to question at a very young age, which is a gift, you know, to really observe, to, to listen, to watch, to see what adds up and what doesn't. Mm -hmm. So that sort of set in there. Um, there was a lot of abuse and other things going on in my life, but I think that kind of key thing that experience really helped me because I spent a lot of time going out on the water, being alone, connecting to that world and feeling held, even though there was chaos happening around me, right? That's a great skill to have right now. <laughs> yeah, it is. And then when I got to um, university, my father had gone through a very traumatic experience and um, he was an alcoholic, but he also had hemochromatosis, which is an iron retention disease. So his body was being poisoned and then he added the alcohol on top of it. And, you know, that's a cocktail for certain death. So he was going through some very intense times through my matric years, which would be normally very stressful. But the other gift I got through there was, again, that stillness. So my father's running around seeing hallucinations going ballistic. And I just find myself going really calm and just going, what's needed right now? So, you know, all of these things that could be seen as really tragic events were not, they were incredible gifts. Wow. And I, and I so feel that when you, when you do your work is, is that exact thing, what's needed right now. And I think, I, I think I've heard you say those exact words as well. It's the key thing that underlines any form of therapy. You, you go to that point of pain and you ask that part of yourself, what do you need? You know, okay. What ails you? It's all that old sort of mythology and everything else where they go and they say, what ails you? Really connecting, listening to that part in pain and asking what it needs. And that's, if we can do that, we can heal anything. So could you give us an example of um, when you've done that either with yourself or with one of your clients so that um, people listening to this can get like a little bit more of an idea on how they can ask themselves that question and do that for themselves? I know it's going to be different with everyone, but give us it always is, but it's really, it's a process of listening, you know, so everything I do in life alignment, life alignment is a healing modality, right? Then how did I get into that? Well, we'll tell that story later, but the key thing with all of this is self-empowerment. So many of us are in pain because whether we are aware of it or not, we're actually in a state of victimhood. We're victimhood. Feeling, yeah, we're feeling disempowered. Something's been done to us. A lot of people that are control freaks are controlling because inside there is that part that is desperately needing some form of stability in life. And that's really frightened. And as a result of being frightened, they counterbalance that fear with control. Okay. So part of me, I had that really upheaval up childhood. So I learned to control. I controlled myself, I controlled my emotions, and I would be a bit dictatorial to everyone around me in my early days. I'm not so much anymore. My husband very lovingly, sweetly says that I'm a rhinoceros with an AK-47 when I've got my mind set on something. 
very sweet, very sweet image. <laughs> but when he said that, I listened to it that I thought I could get offensive at this, but then I thought, well, I really love rhinos. What is it I love about them? They're so strong and so powerful. And they are short-sighted, which I am too, but that means they're really focused on what's in front of them. And they have those horns, so I'll take that as unicorn horns and magical abilities, and you know. Which so is absolutely true. It is. So it's it's really, you know, perception, perspective, how you see something. So coming back to asking what ails you. Um, there's a lot of stories. I've been practicing for 25 years and I've been doing this more probably for 35 years. Hmm. Okay, so what comes to mind is my lungs. I've had three near-death experiences because of lungs. When I was born, I had severe lung trauma. I was asthmatic and one else. And at a very young age, I threw my asthma pump away because I didn't like it. And I taught myself to breathe. Wow. Okay, so breathing, you think it's your lungs. It's not really. <laughs> it's a focused intention of bringing and centering. So in the middle of my death experience, I remember very clearly, this happened about 10 years ago, I moved into a house they had done multiple ant poisonings using pine reasonal, which they assured me was completely harmless. And it turned out I have a severe allergy to pine reasonal. So I ended up with pretty much lung collapsing, you know, severe, severe asthma, severe inability to breathe. And night times were always worse. And I would be sitting there at night and I'd go alone because I didn't want to deal with everybody else's trauma you know when you're in extreme pain and somebody else is freaking out that just doesn't help mm. okay it's like i can't reassure you right now so just go back to bed and leave me alone to deal with us okay that's what i'm like and it got to that point where i remember the description i was, I was sitting in this incredible pain i could barely breathe and it felt like i had barbed wire tight 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 around me but the barbed wire was made of ice and had like three inch long icicles and I felt like that and it was being tightened wow. so there I am in extreme pain and there's this other part of me going oh this is interesting <laughs> yeah so it's really about learning to to become to becoming the witness so that part of me breaks away and says so what are you feeling right now describe the pain to me and I'm like <laughs> but <laughs> At the same time, there's part of me that gets curious about it and goes, well, it's like barbed wire made from ice and it's penetrating really, really deep inside. What do you need? I need to breathe. Or how am I going to breathe? Well, it's a wire. What do we do with ice and wire? We heat it up. We heat it up with fire. What is the fire? Where, is the, where can I get the fire from? And then I just started finding the internal fire and starting somehow I went into this place and this was the near death experience where I just went into this burst of light. In the moment of coming to that burst of light, everything stopped. The pain immediately stopped. It just stopped. And in that moment, there was no pain. There was nothing. There was no concern. It was a point of absolute stillness, of pure light. And I could breathe. And in that place of no thing, pure light, I met myself. Everybody else gets to meet angels. I meet me. <laughs> Hello. Okay. It's a bit of a letdown, but fine. Um, and I'm faced with me who says to me, so why are you living? What is your reason? Oh, my children. But your children are actually going to be fine if you die. Really? That's a bit disappointing. You know, your ego is just not happy to hear this. Yeah. If you think about it, the family is going to be there. This is going to be there. Oh, okay. So you've got to let go of that. So three days in a row, I went through this experience. I let go of my children. I let go of my work. I let go of my husband. Actually, I did it the other way around. I let go of my husband, let go of my work, and then let go of my children. I realized that they could not be the reason why I lived. And I had to make a choice to live for me. Yeah. And I connected in that moment to my real passion is to be and understand what it is to be in life, to experience life. Mm -hmm. No other rhyme and reason because it's nice. 
<laughs> and in that, in that realization, in that moment, in that moment of finding what do I need? I need that light. And it's an internal light. It's an internal fire. I think I ignited my own passion for life. Mm. And it completely melted the barbed wire. It melted the, the ice. And I started breathing. And from that day, I've never had lung problems again. Wow. And that was from a lifelong lung problem experience. So it was really me talking to me. What do you need? I need the ice to melt. Mm. And it doesn't, it doesn't have to be like some weird conscious ooh experience. You know, sometimes when I'm working with clients, I had a little girl come with a knee problem. And she was like 13, 14 at the time, very promising sportswoman. Um, but facing knee surgery and they came to me as a last bid so I sit her down on my table I'm working with life alignment at this stage life alignment is a great technique it's um working with the person's higher self and you have dowsing which I kind of like because then I don't feel like I'm being totally woo-woo I mean okay working a pendulum maybe feels woo-woo but you know it's solid I can muscle test it's solid I have lists they're solid Okay, the body knows what's going on for the body. So basically with life alignment, we, we douse, we check for permission from the body. So the higher self gives us all the answers, which means that person is empowered, a state of empowerment. And then we find where the blockages are using mass and testing. The body can actually tell you, this is where the blockage is. This is what needs to be done. This is the body point that's involved. These are the other body points that are needed to heal it. And these are the words, it's like playing snap. Because the body is vibrating, you can match that frequency with the frequency of the words. And it'll come down to a time frame, a story, and what else. So that's the key basic of life alignment, right? So I'm sitting with this girl with a knee issue, and the knee doesn't come up as a priority. Missing her grandparents and her father comes up as the story. And it had nothing to do with the knee. I didn't touch structural. I think I touched immune system or something else. Okay. Mm. Nothing to do with the knee. So it's not logical. So when people think illnesses are logical, they're not. There's nothing logical about emotions, right? Mm -hmm. Why would it impact the knee? So what I did in her session, when we worked out that I mentioned her grandparents and her father, and she burst into tears and she, she missed them all. Her father was working far away from home and her grandparents had died and she felt disconnected. And maybe that's the knee, you know, the connection. Mm -hmm. And... So I happened to have some crystals and some shells in my room and I bought them out, just intuition. Um, connecting to them was coming up as a sort of solution. So I asked her to choose from these things, things that represented her father and her grandparents. So for her father, she chose a crystal and she remembered his hugs and his feelings and his words. And then when she held the crystal, she could remember that. And she could imagine being with him and what he would say and his arms around her. So that became her father. And she chose to wear that and to keep it in her pocket at all times. So anytime she missed him, she'd grab it, pick it up and feel his hug, remember his words. And for her grandparents, she chose a shell and she would lift it to her ear and she'd have a conversation with him like a telephone. Wow. So just in doing that and remembering that and rebuilding the connection, she got off the table with no knee pain and she never needed surgery. She went on to be a very good sportswoman. Mm. Okay. So teaching her how to find some object to connect and from that how to listen and meet the needs because she would imagine them and she would have a conversation and they'll give her advice and then she'd follow through in the advice. Now, who is she really getting the information from them or from her higher self? Does it matter? No. Does it work? Yes. So do we care about the details? No. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, that's so interesting. In my last podcast, I was talking about injuries and how we get messages from them as well, which has been a big part of my journey too. So it's never surprising, <laughs> but always Isn't fascinating. Um, so you, you touched on briefly what um life alignment is about and i don't know i was trying to think about this before we spoke because it's such a massive massive system mm -hmm. and there's so much detail and so much intric intricacy involved in it um and 
it's I don't know, it's complex, but it's not. It's actually extremely basic. Awesome. Can you explain it in a basic way, which brings in some of maybe those complexities? Let's go to the old fashioned way of doing things, shall we? All right. So it goes like this We are made of cells and we're vibrating, we're energy in motion. Okay. Now, uh, most states of energy have different states of being. So let's take water. And we are made up of water very largely. Water has different states of being according to how fast or how slow its cells are vibrating. Okay. When water is in its peak vibration, it's in it's in steam phase. So the particles are far apart from each other. They're vibrating really quickly and you've got gases, steam, and it's extremely powerful, right? Mm -hmm. Then if you slow down the vibration, all those particles move a little bit closer together, all those molecules right it's still vibrating it's vibrating at a slow place and everything moves closer together and now you have it in liquid form mm -hmm. all right if you compact it even more and you lower the temperature those things come even more solid and you become a solid form which is ice so human beings in our absolute expanded phase we're like the gas we're like the steam our aura is really big and we're expansive and we're expressive. When we're mad, we go, ah! when we're sad, we cry, when we do things, you know, when we're happy, we're joyful and we're bouncing around in life. Okay? Mm -hmm. But then we are impacted by, by emotions, by our belief systems. So English people don't cry. We don't express our emotions. We mm -hmm. must have a stiff upper lip. So something comes along and we get upset. So here's a little issue. Okay. And this comes along and it triggers us, but we suppress the emotions. So we check that little story. Energy's got to go somewhere, right? And if we're not expressing, it's going in. So we take it into the related organ or gland. What happens? Those little molecules now have to make space for something else. So their vibration lowers. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the next thing comes along and we do the same thing and we chuck it and stuff it into the same place because we can't express mm. for whatever reason, for whatever belief system, okay? And at this stage, we're getting into the watery phase. So we might find we're feeling a bit emotional, but we're still suppressing. And we might get tears and eyes. We might be going a little bit slower, you know. Things aren't quite flowing as well, but we're still kind of moving. And then the next thing comes along and we keep doing this. Stuff it in there. The only way this organ can cope is for all those molecules to come closer to closer because now this emotion is becoming crystalline. Mm. So it's going into physical ice. So this is where it becomes physical and we start feeling physical symptoms. Okay. Mm. So this is where your clients generally start coming to you, either because they're in the watery phase or they're in the ice phase and it's becoming crystalline. So if you went to a massage therapist or a reflexologist, when they do your feet, they feel those crunchy bits. That's crystallized emotion, which is why in massage, when they do those crunchy bits or in reflexology, it's not unusual to get emotional or to feel an emotion coming up or same with acupuncture and those things you know you put a needle in there and i'm like Ugh! okay <laughs> because that's the suppressed emotion so what we're clearly doing with life alignment right we're using dowsing we're using muscle testing we have body points different body points which are entry points for the body kind of like acupuncture but without the needles okay so how do you access the body each organ each gland has like a minor chakra if you like you've got the major chakras but each organ and gland also has a chakra point, which is like your acupuncture point, your meridian point. And by touching that, you bring awareness to it. You know, if I have a thorn stuck in here and you touch it, suddenly I become aware there's a thorn there, all right? Mm -hmm. Until then I ignore that. I'm like, you can get used to something. After two or three weeks, the body just gets used to it and that's my new normal. And I forget, I just live with it. Oh yeah, my shoulder's always sore. I'll just get on with that. And then something else happens and then something else happens until you touch it and you trigger it. And amazing it's like, how, oh, wow. Yeah, it's amazing how we get used to things. Um, yeah. Like I've, I've noticed it with me in the past as well. And I'm sure probably, probably still, you know, until we let go of something, we don't recognize that it's there. And um, when I was a personal trainer in the past in my former career, I would like people would start to become aware of the pain that they were in as mm -hmm. I was working with them. <laughs> and, then, mm -hmm. and then they, then they can let go of it. But you, you, 
it's a, yeah, we just become used to so many things. And I yeah. often had people, you know, clients say to me, oh, it's just because I'm old. I'm just getting old. And I'm like, don't give me that bullshit. I'm not buying it. <laughs> like Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So we take that as our new level of normality until it becomes to the point where mm, something's really not right. So when people come and see us often in the beginning, it's because it's got to the watery or the ice phase, you know, other times there's something not quite working in the business or something not quite working in the house. That's when we'll come. So we start with the first thing off is always permission. So, you know, I love life alignment because I, I kind of feel it's sandwiched in safety. So I start with permission. I end with balance complete. In doing that, I know I'm safe, all right? So the energy keeps me safe. The whole process is designed in a very structured, logical, safe way. This is why I love it. In asking permission, we can only do what is right for that client. So that's the kind of the contract agreement. Are we a good match to each other? If not, we're not going to get permission. Is this the right technique for this person? If not, we're not going to get permission. So I love it because of that safety factor. And at the end of the balance, is balance complete? If I've forgotten anything, it's going to go no. And I go, oh, yeah, right. So this is the safety that I love about it. So if I get permission, I know that whatever's coming up, we can deal with because otherwise I'm not going to get permission. So again, safety, mm. right? So I love that. Then the next step, once we've got permission, permission is also where the client's sort of higher self checks out the, the menu. So this is what we would call the priority list, right? Like the menu, you go into a restaurant, mm, I think I'll have the lamb chops if I'm into meat or, you know, that kind of thing. Um, the person knows, like that young girl, her body knew not to take me to the knee because the knee was a secondary effect of the core emotion and not the most appropriate way to work. So life alignment works by priority, meaning take me to the place where we can get the maximum of our work done and that is the core issue and if I resolve that everything else comes into place I'm not saying you can do it all in one session although sometimes things have been done in one session life is a continual unfolding session you know a series of events so but with the key issue where is maximum benefit and using muscle testing using dowsing we get taken by the client's body to the place and then it's kind of like looking at it all as a biological computer. We program. Your body is a biological computer. You know, it's a fantastic, amazing thing. So we program it. We're full of programs. You get programmed from the minute you're born, how to breathe, what to eat, what to think, all the rest of it. So really, it's about undoing those programs and coming back into your truth. So we do that by reversing program. Where's the priority? Let's say it's the heart. Okay, so we touch the heart, immediately bringing conscious awareness into the heart. Enter. That's the program. What does the heart need to support it? Ask the body, the left kidney, the lung. So we touch the heart, touch the left kidney, touch the lung and enter it. That's the program. So now the body knows to focus there. Then we code other lists like these. These are emotional lists, right? So words. And we ask the heart, hey, what ails you? The heart can talk back by vibration. It's kind of like music, listening to music. If you pause a symphony, you can actually analyze the violins are playing D, the clarinet playing an F sharp, and the trumpet's got it totally wrong because it's on a D flat. So, you know, that's how you do it. Right? Same thing, it's music. So the heart might say, I'm needing harmony and I'm feeling sad. In the area of, we go to life field list, in the area of school in 1945 when I was three years old or whatever, okay? And it's connected to my mother because she sent me to school and left me on my own, there, you know? Uh -huh. And then based on that, I jumped to all sorts of conclusions. Mm. Mm. Okay, so my client just before this, an amazing young woman working with her and uh, we get down to three years old and it's a story around her father and he's always busy. So she draws the conclusion that everything else is more important than her. Yeah. And so she starts this lifetime 
where she attracts male partners in particular, where they get sidetracked by other things that are more important and she's waiting. Mm -hmm. So her lesson in this life is to take control of her own life and not wait, to ask, to plan, to confront in a polite way, not sit back like a three-year-old. She's an adult. A three-year-old shouldn't be running her career, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we program all of that, and then we go through a series <clears throat> of coaching and counseling. Now, in life alignment, that's also made very easy because we can even ask the body through the series of questions, how do you want this resolved? Do you want to go to the inner child? Do you need to connect to an animal? Do you need protection? So eventually that becomes very instinctive and intuitive. And the practitioner really just tunes in and feels it because those questions become embedded in your own being. But in the beginning for a new practitioner, that's really handy because you've got that. And if you're doing this technique on yourself, because you can balance yourself, you've got that. So it helps you find that. So coming back to this and relating it all together, there's the issue inside this tissue, <laughs> okay? You're touching the point, bringing conscious awareness to it, and then you start to emote, you express, what do you need? Um, this morning we went through frustration and she expressed her frustration and then she needed to call on that aspect of herself who could take command of her life that she could rely on rather than trying to rely on external people to become her own mother, to become her own father. She's an adult now. And to have that commitment to honor herself and her own needs. And when you do that, out comes all these, there's the tears, there's the anger, there's the frustration, right? And then this starts to vibrate back at that gaseous phase. The mm. cells expand, everything goes back to how it is because it's got space again. Yeah. And vibrant health can return. And all of that is about self-empowerment. What mm. do you need to do? What do you want? It's a coaching in that side. Mm. At the same time, my hands are working over the body or distance. My hands would be working like this. If she was in front of me, I'd be touching her. And we have a whole range of vortex cards, which are energy embedded in a particular frequency, embedded in a magnetic field. So when we place it, it's like that acupuncture needle taking that specific frequency into that organ. Mm. Okay. And then working with hands or with cards above the body. So how do we take that concept and expand it? Because this applies to astrology, to iridology, to homes and businesses. You know, like you said, it's a very, very vast field, but it's actually all the same thing. Mm. Astrology, that's your, your body in the sky. <laughs> back into the body everything is macrocosm microcosm if you look at the stars and you look at yourselves you're looking at the same thing mm. okay mm. so that is my external home this is my internal home and the walls around me is just the the home between that one and this one so if you take a house a house is a body and the different people in the house are the arms the legs the eyes the ears the organs and glands and the interrelationship of those people is how the energy functions in the house and we also have external influences like ley lines and geopathic stress well you as a human being have external influences what do you need to do about it, it comes down to the same thing what do you need to do about it do you need to put a card here do you need to put a water flow there do you need to bring in good boundaries same story mm. a business same story a business is a body you have the head of the business, Jenny, your CEO. You have someone who's the heart of the business. You have somebody who's the hands of the business, somebody who's the feet of the business, somebody who is the cleaner, who does the whole digestive system of the business. Yeah. And how those people interrelate is how your organs and glands interrelate. Mm. External, internal, microcosm, microcosm. So although it may seem like a very vast field that does all these sorts of things, it's only doing one thing. It's aligning you into your truth, into your body, soul into body. Are you living a heart integrated soul life in your human body? Which makes sense why it was originally called body alignment. Yes, because it was the aligning of the subtle bodies. Mm. Mm. And then we expanded it to the name life alignment because it's aligning to your life. Mm but it is your soul aligning because ultimately this is not who I am. This is a sack of meat. 
and bones <laughs> and bacteria and viruses. There's very, very little of the original me in this. Let's face it, your whole digestive system is foreign entity helping you digest foreign food. It's not even in you. It looks like it's in you, but it's not because this is external skin cells all the way through from there to there. You're hollow inside. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Awesome. And your food goes in and it doesn't actually come into your body. It goes into that tube and then it gets absorbed into your body and then the stuff gets chucked out. And so really your digestive system isn't inside. It's just an external pipe that's pushed inside through the middle. It's like an internal courtyard. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's filled with foreign population. Right. We need workers within there. So your gut biome is an entire community of bacteria and whatnot else doing the work for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So awesome. it's all about harmony, you know. So really, what is this? This is my my suit that I put in to, you know, live my life. It's like I need to be the driver of my car. You know, you get in your car, you take control of your drive your car, and you drive it unless you have a driver. But if you really want to control that car, I suggest you get into the driver's seat and drive it. And this is your life. Do you want somebody else to drive your life? Your three-year-old, your mommy, your daddy, that teacher, that boyfriend? Or do you want to drive your life? Mm -hmm. Me, please. I would like to drive my life. <laughs> so I have, a, I have a question around the home alignment because yeah. um, we have systems out there that are also um, very old and well-respected like feng shui for example okay. um how does this i don't know differ or what are the similarities with this because i remember you talking to me once a year or so ago about you were looking for your new place and it had to have the driveway going up to the house because of the specific energy so are there any more pieces of information you can give us that we should look out for or we can change in our own homes like what do you do if you're living in a place that you love that the driveway goes down um so <laughs> there are lots of different things i mean it's, it's very seldom that somebody presents me with a house that cannot be balanced okay. so the house is always going to be a a representation of the collective consciousness of the group of people that are living in it right yeah okay so when I'm balancing a house, I'm balancing the physical structure and the energetic placement of it on the land that it's on and its interrelationship there and the internal features and how you connect to that internal features. But primarily, I'm balancing the interrelationship of the people who live in it. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. So when I want to select a home, if I want a home uh, and I'm in the process of choosing a home, <laughs> I don't get everybody to talk about what they want because this one wants them, this one wants, and that one wants, and that one wants, and this one wants, and that one wants. So this has happened in my family. And at the moment, it's just my mum and I who live in a house together. My husband wants to live by the sea, so he's 30 minutes down the line. I'm next to a lake, and that works out really well. He's my part-time weekend uh, ocean vacation, and then I come to the lake to work. Okay. <laughs> it actually works really well for me. Brilliant. Um, so previously, about oh, seven, eight years ago, we needed to move house. Um, my mother wanted one set of things because my mother was living with us. My husband wanted another set of things. My daughter wanted another set of things. And I'm looking at all of this and going, hey, what about me? So I started to notice that we couldn't actually manifest anything because everybody was so focused on trying to get their thing that they couldn't hear each other. They couldn't see a property without seeing what was missing. Mm -hmm. So what I got them to do, I said, all right, enough of this. We're actually counterintuitive here. It's not working because everybody's at war with each other and wars don't actually bring you a peaceful home. So I said to everybody, all right, do you all trust the process that when you really focus and you, you can ask the angels to bring in what you really want, what's going to work for the family as a whole? Yes, they all trusted that. So I said, okay. Everybody sit down. I gave them all a piece of paper. I said, write up a list of the home you want to live in. So they all wrote the qualities of the list of the home they wanted to live in. And I said, now you're not going to discuss this list with anybody else. And I didn't look at the pieces of paper. We put all the pieces of paper into an envelope and we sealed it and put it in an altar and we lit the candle and we all made an agreement. These are the qualities for which our angels must choose or our house must choose. I love this. And we will trust 
that out of all these ingredients, the right place that perfectly matches everybody's needs to the highest good of all will be selected. Mm. Okay, we put it on the altar, we lit a candle, we let it go. And then I went away because I was training. Um, so I went to do a training module. While I was away, my husband phones up and he says, you know, I was thinking about X, Y, and Z, and I've realized, no, I don't really want to live in a big block of land out in the country because I don't actually want to be mowing all that stuff and plowing all those fields. I think I actually want to work clo live closer to the town. I'm like, oh, okay. Didn't question or anything. I was having a, a real giggle at the moment, but I didn't. Then my mom phones me up and she says, you know, I've been thinking about it, and I realized I don't actually want to be into city center kind of thing. I'm actually quite comfortable. So long as there's a bus nearby that I can catch. Oh, yeah, okay. Let it go. Suddenly, I get a phone call from them, and they're very excited. Now, they were very opposed to each other about what kind of house. They were chatting to the next-door neighbor, and the next-door neighbor let them know that their house was actually going up for rent. And would they like to come and have a look at it? So they went together and they got terribly excited because it was a double story. It had place downstairs for work and it had place upstairs for this and place over there for that. And it had a pool. And in the back, it had a big shed. And the bus stop was around the corner. And, you know, it's in a country area. So we ended up moving next door. <laughs> Literally on your doorstep. <laughs> Literally on the doorstep. All we did is collapse the fence, walk everything across and put the fence back up. And... And the two people that were most opposed to each other and trying to find the house, found the house together. Ah, I love it. Okay. <laughs> so it's those kind of things. So when I'm balancing a house, I get sent a plan. All right. Now, traditional feng shui, you have the bagua where you've split it into the different elements. And you can see we've done a similar thing, except in traditional feng shui, the heart center is dead center of the plan here we find an energetic heart center because we're not just working with the lay of the land. We're working with the energy in Feng Shui. You're looking at the house according to north, south and everything else. And what its placement is according to rivers, according to different things like that. So, you know, driveways are important. And if you've got a driveway going down, you need something to block the energy and curve it and things like that. Mm -hmm. So you would either put a mirror on it to reflect the energy back up or you would curve the driveway so the energy is not going straight down so we do incorporate aspects of that but more importantly we're looking at this this flow line that is the flow of energy how it moves through the house so i'm looking at electromagnetics and geopathic stress and um with the vortex technology that jeff levine who's the founder of life alignment and design these are magnetic devices okay and depending where you place them and as to what they can do so this on the front door of a house has the ability to harmonize electromagnetic frequencies and geopathic stress. And I say harmonize, not remove. Mm. Energy is energy. Don't remove energy because then it box up and it bounces on the land next door to you and it's got to go somewhere. Energy's got to flow. So when you've got a piece of music, why not just teach the trumpet player how to play his tune in harmony? <clears throat> okay. So this is what this is doing. It's a harmonizer. So that that energy is still there, but it's no longer causing dysfunction in the body. It's, it's, it harmonizes. So it, it just shifts the tune so that it's in harmony with, the, with, with your human body. Okay. Our human bodies resonate at Earth frequency. It originally was at 7.8 hertz. It's moving now more to 13. Um, and if you watch the Schumann resonance, it's going bonkers, bonkers, which is why so many people are feeling like, what the hell? Mm -hmm. Because our bodies tune to the frequency of the earth. So one thing you can do to help with this constant shift we're going on and when you're dealing with houses and things to harmonize, go barefoot outside. Put your feet on the earth, meditate on the earth, connect to the earth. Mm -hmm. All right. Plant vegetables and herbs in your garden and eat your vegetables and herbs from your own garden because it harmonizes your body to that soil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then there are many other things you can do. You can put crystals in certain places. You can put vortex cards up. But the key thing that I'm really doing when I'm doing a home alignment balance, I'm balancing the relationship between the different people right. and the stories and the history we bring in, you know, if you don't harmonize your story with each other, it doesn't matter where you move, you're never going to be comfortable. Mm. If you don't harmonize with your own body, 
It doesn't matter what clothes you put on it or how you dress it or what shape it takes on or what makeup you put on. You're not going to be happy because it's an inside job. Yeah. I need to be happy with who and what I am. And then I suddenly find I'm happy and grateful with my body. And then my body adjusts accordingly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And likewise, when I start finding gratitude and love within myself and within my environment, and I start to appreciate what I have got, I come into harmony and then I actually end up getting more. If I'm sitting in resentment and focused on the lack of what I don't have, I amplify that and I get more of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've definitely had experiences of doing that. And I still find myself sometimes doing that where, and, and then it's like, oh, hold on a second. What am I doing? I'm focusing on, oh, all right. Oh, damn it. And you're like, damn it, damn it. <laughs> and if you focus on what you don't want, you, you get what you don't want. You absolutely do. And it's just time and time again. And I, and I find that the more I've been practicing this, then my, it's like your vibration lifts or something. You get better at it and better at it and better at it. And I think there's always, there's always the opportunity to get better at, at this. It's life is evolving. It's about evolution. Yeah. It's going to change and it's about harmonizing with our change. Mm. And it's about who am I in the change? You know, I can live within my own bubble within anything and still continue to have my own happy life. Mm. Absolutely. But it requires me becoming present and choosing how I do that. So, Arlene, what would you, um, if, if you could, like if people can take something away from this, you've already given some some tools that people can use straight away. But what would you what would you most want people to take away? What what would you feel would be the the biggest gift you can give them today that they could start to implement in their lives straight away to create um, to begin weaving their magical worlds for themselves? All okay. right. Ask yourself, how do I want to be treated in this life? Hmm. How do I want people to think about me? Mm. What do I want them to say about me? What do I, I want to feel from them? How do I want them to touch me? How do I want them to hold me? Write all of that down. And then commit to doing everything on that list for yourself. If you want love in the world, fall in love with yourself and treat the, yourself the way you want to be treated. See yourself the way you want someone else to see you. Yeah. When you start to do that, your world changes. Because the world is a mirror. We live in a reflective reality. Everything out there is a reflection of what's going inside us. I mean... You might think, how does that happen? How's the politics reflection? Well, it is because of how you're responding to it and how you're seeing it. If you're not in harmony with it, you're going to experience and put the news on every time there's some asshole saying something you hate to press that button. When you become in harmony with yourself, you start saying, well, what can I do? What can I do? Start looking at what I can't do and start looking at what I can do and move towards that. Last year, I ended up with bursitis in both my feet because I pushed myself too hard. I'm an Aries, born in Hitler's birthday. I have a drive of a half, right? <laughs> okay. So I have the ability to drive myself literally almost to death. I have it a few times. So I was like, right, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And I walked eight and a half kilogram, kilometers, almost 10 on a beach barefoot. And I could feel my feet getting sore and I didn't stop. I pushed. And I didn't stop and I pushed. And afterwards, my feet were hell. But that's okay. I went on another hike. <laughs> of course you did. Because I wasn't listening to myself. So, you know, I'm a delightful example of flawed humanity, which is perfect in its imperfection. Okay. Um, and then I realized, okay, it got to the point where I literally couldn't walk. And I went and had my feet scanned. And I, I had bursitis in both feet. I'd actually managed to get chronic inflammation in the pads of both my feet. You're not going to walk. You have to put your feet up and rest. Aren't you? What does that mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, so and I was on this drive to get fit and strong and healthy, and you've just taken my feet away. <laughs> so I sat with that and went, all right, I can become a lardy tub. 
and feel sorry for myself or I can say, all righty, I busted that one, didn't I? So what can I do? I can swim and I love swimming and I enjoy it. I got a stationary bike. I've managed to learn to pedal five minutes on the thing. Not more than that yet, but at five minutes, I celebrate every 10 seconds extra I do on it. Mm. I learned that I had to be compassionate with myself and put my feet up. So at the end of the day's work, instead of charging off, I put my feet up, I flick on Netflix and I find something amusing to watch or I go onto YouTube or something else. Mm. Um, and now I can walk four kilometers on these feet. And I celebrate it. I've learned to put nice padding in for my feet. I've learned to realize, oh, what is this actually telling me? I'm driving too hard. I need to be more compassionate towards myself. What do I want? I want someone to pamper me. Oh, that means I've got to pamper me. So I got a foot massage thing and I massage my feet and I roll them out and I went and started getting people to massage my feet. And... Um, I bathe them in nice things. I put nice things on them. I went and bought the nicest pair of shoes that I could and put the nicest padding in there for my feet. And I decided to start loving my feet. Now they cooperate. Mm. Okay. So, you know, little things. What do you want from someone else? I want to be touched gently. I want them to tell me I'm the most beautiful thing in the world. Ah, oh, shit. Now I've got to see myself <laughs> in a mirror and go... And it's a challenge, but I've discovered I actually have really nice silky skin. I really do. I've got really nice feeling skin. So I focus on that. Mm -hmm. And I've got beautiful eyes and I focus on that. Yeah. And I could look at my belly and go, you fat, lumpy thing. But instead I've gone, aren't you gorgeous? You've saved my life. Mm -hmm. You birthed me, my kids. And now my belly is actually responding and shrinking. Mm -hmm. That's amazing, isn't it? But it's taking patience and it's taking time and it's taking compassion and it's taking love and love starts inside everything starts inside so just one quick question as well just popped up when you said that because I'm, I'm thinking of um a client who's who's um been talking about this recently and i'm interested to see hear your take on this for someone who feels they've never experienced unconditional love from anybody else and so they're, they're not yet connected to what mm. healing is like what what would you um what would you say to them all right my favorite thing with this i i love listening to abraham hicks okay mm. abraham is channeled by esther and jerry hicks well jerry's now on the other side so he channels too but i love the message of abraham and i got introduced to abraham a long time ago through some quotes that arrived and i thought abraham was just somebody quoting some old wise dude until i realized it was some woman actually charling that freaked me out but then i realized actually the stuff is good so don't worry about it um and they said when somebody asked them about this about unconditional love they said well hello darling you're in a conditional planet the physical world is conditional it has to be because it's a planet of free will. So we need boundaries. We need protection. Mm -hmm. In order for me to love you and accept you completely the way you are, I have to love and honor and respect me the completely the way I am, which sometimes mean you live 30 k's down the road at the beach and I live here and we meet on weekends. Mm -hmm. To love someone unconditionally, it is a spiritual thing. Spiritual love is unconditional. Physical love is conditional. Physical love needs boundaries and safety because until you feel safe, you can't love. So to allow someone and to say to this and for someone to say, you must love me unconditionally while I'm stabbing you, that is not love because in true essence, your true self doesn't want to stab me. Mm. So to truly honor you, I must put that boundary in and say, I love you, but I also know this isn't who you are because your soul would not want to stab me. Mm. So true unconditional love happens in the first few seconds of a child's life, maybe, while they're in the utero, maybe, and even then, not always. Mm. True unconditional love is spiritual love. I love my children dearly, but when they're in my house, they better pick up after themselves. And if you want to call that conditional, so be it. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. And I, and I love that answer. 
Um, and I think it's a really powerful answer as well because it, again, makes you step out of victim mode. Yeah. So, yeah. I can love the souls of our current politicians. I'm finding their ego is pretty bloody hard going. Yeah. Yeah. So when I focus on them, I have to focus on that spark of divine light within them and ignore everything else. Mm. Um, you keep saying things that I really, really want to talk about because that is um, that is something that has been a big theme for me over the last couple of years is really being able to um, process through the emotions that I'm triggered by, say, for, from a politician or something like that, um, and be able to come into saying, well, that's something that's in within me rather than that's their issue. Um, it's this judgment coming from me. And with um, my beautiful family who have... Um, things that are right for them and I have things that are right for me and they're different, um, then that's been a big, big lesson for me to be able to love people Mm -hmm. spiritually, unconditionally, um, Mm -hmm. and even like them Mm -hmm. um, and, and love them and let go of the pieces that I don't love. And, and I think that's a beautiful thing that you just said. It's like, you can love their, their spark of, um, their soul or their spirit or of who they are and and know that they're just representing a piece of us really yeah yeah you know sometimes when i look at humans it helps me to see them as animals mm. all right i'm this rhinoceros i'm this kind of uh wombat my nose is to the ground and i'm focused and i'm going in my direction and I've been guided. I have a very strong vision of where I'm going in life, okay? So you can put some really nice, pretty fireworks on the side. I'll turn my head sideways and go, very nice, and then, but it's not on my path, so back to my path. My husband, bless him, is an eagle. He's a bird. Um, he's also a bit of a butterfly. And, you know, it's about looking at everything from up here and being involved in everything, and then, ooh, pretty flower, and then back, oh, pretty flower. He's terribly social he loves people he's got to get into the juice of it and you know five days of festival is heaven i'm like five days and i can spare two hours and then i'm out of here i got things to do you know so how do we love each other in that well one thing is my eagle lives in his eagle's nest he's in a block of flats in the, on, by a beach you know getting his his view i'm down on the ground okay and we meet in between mm. You don't have to give up your identity to be with another. Focus on what you love about each other and spend that time together. And then go and spend the other time with someone else who meets those needs, all right? So let relationships become what they need to be. Don't expect one person to be your knight in shining armor. That belongs in the fairy tale book. The knight in shining armor is your own soul. Mm. Yeah. When I focus on what I love about my husband and I'm with him, he shows me that side. When I focus on what irritates the shit of me, then he shows me that side because Mm. he must mirror to me what I am focused on. That is the law. Mm. Yeah. He has this wonderful saying. He loves me very much except when he's pissed off with himself. (laughs) Yeah, I can relate to that. I when he's do. in his shit, all he can see is shit. And so when he looks at me, he sees shit. Mm. Wash your face. Get out of the shift. Have a shower. It changes your view. It's <laughs> kind of like going through life. You fall over. You land in a pile of bullshit. You smell it. You see it. You taste it. You feel it. So life in that moment, every sense says that life is shit. Mm-hmm. Get up and wash your face. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Get up. Have a shower. Have a bath. Go for a walk. Get out of the current situation environment you're in and breathe and catch your breath. Mm -hmm. You come back to yourself. And when you come back to yourself, you come back to your truth. And when you come back to your truth, you know what to do. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, that's so beautiful. Um, So I feel we've had just such a rich conversation. So thank you so much. Uh, I want to ask... Um, my pleasure. I want to ask where people can find you. I know that you offer, you offer so much, um, you offer so much, (laughs) which is great. And I know that people can do, um, 
join in on meditations that you have online? The uh, meditations are free. So yeah. if you want to just get a taste of me, hop onto YouTube and type my name and Arlene Hanks. And there's a whole list of meditations. You can get an experience. Those and they're amazing. So do do that. Like really do do that. And if you want to be on them live Tuesday night, 6.30, oh no, 6 o'clock Brisbane time. So Tuesday night, 6 o'clock Brisbane time is my meditations. To find them uh, on Telegram and on, uh, what's it called, Facebook, Arlene Hanks webinar group. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Or just send me an email, flick me a message on Messenger. You can find me just about anywhere. There's very few Arlene Hanks in the world. There's only a couple of us. And there's only one of us in Australia. So <laughs> it's easy to find my details. Um, I do have a website. It's not updated, but there are 40 blogs on my website. So if you want to just read up and get a bit of inspiration, I write them in the moment. It takes me half an hour. I, very, I do a little bit of editing. It's very spur of the moment. But they are very much about what I do to get through my shit, actually. So they're self-help. It's like, this is what I'm feeling. This is what I did to get out of it. And that's on www.aligninglife.weebly.com. Weebly weebly.com because it's a freebie okay so um yeah you can just type me and you'll find me all over the show mm, awesome and of course you do one-on-one sessions and you one-on-ones and awesome. ones, um, monday nights are webinars so mm. monday nights are topical themes uh i'm currently doing the seven mirrors of relationship mm-hmm. <laughs> last night we did dark night of soul next week do the final one and then the series following that is vision board, how to make vision boards, how to balance vision boards, how to work with vision boards. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so Mondays are topical themes. Tuesday night at 6.30 after the meditation is called potluck. Potluck, you just come with whatever shit you're carrying, you toss it into the pot and we do a group balance. Okay. And then of course, individual sessions and then training and life alignment, whatever. It depends on what my mood is at the moment as to what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. I lay, I really offer people what it is I'm busy currently working from. You can see what I'm working through because that's the topic that I offer. Yeah. Awesome. I, get paid, I get paid to sort me out. I mean, really, that's yeah. the best way to do it. Yeah. I mean, that's that's what we do when we're working with a, with a client that, you know, yeah. I do tell them this, but <laughs> it's like, it's like, oh, how does this relate to me? Right. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Always, always a mirror. Um, yeah, just, yeah, thank you so much again for your time. It is thank you, nice Penny. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome. It's just being, I mean, I do this for me, really. Shh, don't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I know lots of people are, are going to get so much from this and so much yeah. from checking you out online and at the very least coming to one of your um, your webinars or your your meditations or something. So, yeah, thank you again. And um, Absolute pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, lots of love. Aroha nui. Have a good day.